Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. <coughs> um, it will be a lot of different things today. Um, first of all, this lecture is part of the course. It's called um, Physics for Teens. It's presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from, from the website because it has notes immediately next to the video. There is notes. There are some notes and it's very detailed notes like a textbook and sometimes I can miss something uh, during my lecture but notes are much more complete usually or some calculations I might just skip here not to waste any time but I'm putting all the details into uh, into the notes so that's number one uh, number two the website is totally free there are no advertisement sign-in is not really necessary unless you do some functionality related to supervising something for somebody etc now there are other courses on the same website first of all there is a prerequisite mathematics course called math for teens uh, certain things like calculus or vector algebra are mandatory to know the, to, to study physics so i suggest you to familiarize yourself with all these concepts in mathematics from whatever source you, you want including beautysor.com okay now what we are talking today about is electromagnetic energy continuity and basically as a kind of continuation it's a conservation law but a little bit more strong uh, uh, conservation law than something which we used to think about conservation laws Okay, <coughs> so first of all, I would like to um, refer you to another lecture um, within the same topic. Um, so the topic is actually within the Physics 14, there is a part called Waves, and in this part there is a, a topic called Electromagnetic uh, Field Waves. Now, in that topic, I have a lot of different things, including Maxwell equations, which everything is prerequisite basically to whatever the lecture I'm doing. This lecture is one of the last ones within the topics, but I start from certain vector algebra concepts and one of them is diversion. So there is a gradient, there is a diversion, there is a curl, all these are presented in the corresponding lectures of the same topic. Now I'm talking about the lecture called diversion and I spent a lot of time in that lecture basically um, using example of airflow um, what is basically a diversion of vector field so first of all we are talking about vector field in the space which means at every point there is a vector defined so the vector is a function of a point and sometimes of time as well and the wind actually gives you a perfect example at every point there is a direction um, and uh, the magnitude of the wind in that point in space and obviously it's changing with time as well so we have at, end, at, at any point in space a vector um, which depends on coordinates of that point and time so if you have such a vector which depends on position and time it's basically a combination of three components every vector in three-dimensional space has three components and we can call it Vx of x, y, z, t, vy that's the y component of the same coordinates and vz of the same components so this vector has three components okay now the diversion, the divergent, divergence of this particular uh, vector is basically defined. It's a definition. It's a d for dx, vx plus d of vy for dy plus d of v uh, z for dz. Now, each of them is a function of this, the all three parameters. So this is called diversion, and it's usually uh, symbolized as this. 
this is nabla vector which is not really a vector it's a just a triplet and d by dz it's a triplet but if it's a triplet you can basically deal with this as a vector and this is a scalar that product of two vectors which means the first component of this multiplied by per first component of that but in this case it's not really a multiplication it's application of this uh, uh, operator of differentiation to the x which is this plus this applied to this and plus this applied to this and that's what we will get so this is the diver diversion okay we don't need it anymore this is just the definition just the repetition basically and you're supposed to know about this and again from the same lecture on diversions um, I have come up with an equation which is nabla times v um, it's equal to minus d by dt of rho of x y z t. now what is rho Rho is a density of some subject in our particular uh, example in, in the divergence um, lecture. Rho, rho was a, a density of the air. So, if you have some material, some substance, which basically is distributed in space, what this characterizes, this characterizes basically what kind of uh, quantities of this material are coming into the point and this is as a result a density of that point but um, it's actually not a density it's a rate of change of density rho is a density and uh, uh, derivative by, by time is the rate of change so if you have certain sum, su certain amount of substance coming in a certain amount coming out so the difference between them constitutes the net change in the uh, density of that material which we are talking about and we are talking about air over there now so right now we can generalize this example about air to basically any substance it can be water it can be oil in the pump in the pipe um, by the way oil in the in the pipe is the simplest example because obviously if you have a pipe and you have a constant flow of oil it's definitely whatever comes in to a certain area comes out and the density remains constant now whenever it comes in and comes out which means that this thing is equal to zero this is a net between coming in and going out and if it's zero this derivative is zero and if the derivative is zero then the row itself is constant so this is just a trivial example with air wind it's much more complicated example now another example which i would like to talk about is um, electric charge now electric charge is also something which doesn't disappear in the thin air and doesn't move somewhere else with infinite speed which means it just disappears from here and appears there everything is goes smoothly now let's just talk about electric charge a little bit so let's consider that in some area of space you have certain distribution of electric charge so let's again call it rho of x y z t so somewhere there are certain amount of uh, electric charges okay great 
and they are continuously distributed. We're talking about continuous distribution. All right. Now, as such, we basically can talk about what if there is some kind of electric current. Now, what is electric current? Electric current is amount of um, electric charge, let's call it Q, which is moving through certain place with certain speed. So basically it's a derivative of, uh, uh, of, of charge, rate of change of charge per unit of time. That's what electric current is. Now, if it goes along certain conductor, um, the conductor has certain area, and we can talk about density of electric charge. So, um, if you will divide by the area of the conductor, that would be density of the electric charge. So, basically, let's call it J. So, we are talking about movement of electric charge in time, and then if it moves along certain conductor, we are talking which which has certain cross uh, section area. We are talking about per unit of area. So J is electric current uh, density, which is amount of electricity coming through this infinitesimal um, area during the infinitesimal uh, time period. That's what J is. Now. How can we just generalize? Is there any difference between this, let's say, and, and the airflow? Well, basically, there is no principal difference. It's exactly the same process. So there is a term for this in physics. It's called flux. So flux is basically a flow of something. Maybe it's a flow of air, flow of uh, oil in the pipe, or flow of electricity, electric charge. So it's a flow. And whenever we are talking about something like this, it's the flow density. So flow density is amount of something, in this case it's charge, or air, or, or oil, or whatever. So it's amount of something which is flowing through the unit of area uh, during the unit of time. So that's what it is. So in this case, this is a flux density. and it, it's exactly the same logic as I was using in the uh, divergence lecture about the air to derive the formula about this. And we have exactly the same thing. So the formula is nabla times j is equal to minus d rho by dt. Exactly the same equality. This is actually called um, continuity equation. Well, continuity, why is it continuity? Well, but, um, be, well, obviously because right now we're talking about something which is coming in and going out. So this is basically a net result of the coming in and going out. And this is the resulting rate of change of the density. The greater the difference between coming in and going out, the greater change of the density. And if this is, um, by, by actually, by, by definition, whenever we are um, getting more out than in, uh, the density is uh, uh, changing, and that's why there is a minus sign here. So it's exactly the same continuity equation with electric charge which basically is a little bit stronger law of conservation than the traditional law of conservation. Because traditionally, we are talking about if you have some kind of a closed system, then um, electric charge or mass or something doesn't really disappear from it. However, this doesn't really exclude the situation when something like electric charge or energy or momentum, whatever law of conservation we are talking about, whenever something uh, 
instantaneously disappears from one place inside the uh, system and appears in another. No, that is not possible because the law of continuity actually tells that it's not really momentarily movement from one place to another. It's a flow. So there is a flux. There is a flow and there is the density of this flux and everything goes through this basic equation. Okay. So, this is electric charge. Now, we were talking about electromagnetic energy, which is basically the um, uh, purpose of this lecture. So, I would like to talk about energy, electromagnetic energy, in exactly the same terms as I was just talking about charge, for example, and come up with the same equation. Okay? So, okay. So, first of all, do we have a flux when we are talking about electromagnetic field? Well, yes, because let's say you have a light. You know, if you will um, direct the light onto something, that something, if light is really intense, that something might actually be heated up by light, if it's a strong light. Well, if it's not st so strong light, it's still heated up, but not to a noticeable extent. And there is a photo uh, there is a photo effect whenever you bombard with light with some metal plate it can actually uh, kick out the uh, the electrons from the from the metal plate right that's photo effect we were talking about it before so there are really different um, uh, observations which basically um, come up with very simple result light carries energy electromagnetic waves carry energy. So, um, oh, by the way, radio, whenever electromagnetic waves, radio waves, are hitting some kind of antenna, there is movement of electrons in it, right? We can uh, obviously uh, amplify them, but, but no matter what it is, it's still moving. If uh, they were not moving, we would not be able to amplify anything. So. Electromagnetic field carries energy, so there is a flux, and there is an energy density, there is all this type of things. Now, speaking about energy density, we already came up with the formula. Again, that's not in this particular um, uh, topic of the course, it's the previous one, where um, the topic is called um, energy waves. And within that topic, we were talking about uh, electromagnetic field and its electric component and its magnetic component, and we came up with a formula, which I'm going just to use as is. If you just don't remember, I refer you to this previous lecture. So we have a formula which basically tells that um, electric and magnetic um, energy, which is uh, energy density is equal to one half epsilon e square plus one over mu b square. Now e is electric component intensity of the field, b is magnetic component intensity of the field, epsilon is permittivity of the medium where the whole thing is going on. If it's vacuum, it's epsilon zero. And mu is magnetic permeability. <laughs> permeability of, of the space with where the whole thing is going on. So E and B are very important characteristics. They are actually defining electromagnetic field. And again, whatever we were talking before about Maxwell's equation, etc., E and B were involved. So E and B are basically defining the field. And I would like to express the um, uh, flux and flux uh, uh, density of electromagnetic field in terms of E and B. So I know there is some flow of energy. But what is it? Well, obviously it depends on the flow uh, on the electromagnetic uh, field characteristics. Now these are characteristics of magnetic field. There are functions of x, y, z, and t, the same as this one, and the same as energy. So that's why if I will be able to express in terms of these two the flow of energy, more importantly, flux density of the energy, 
flow, then that would be basically the answer to my question about what exactly this energy continuity. Now we're talking about energy continuity. And yes, we will come up with a very similar um, formula of continuity as with uh, electric charge or with air. All right. So let's do it. <coughs> now, so here is the plan. Now, if I know the energy density, I know basically the left part of this equation. So let me just repeat the equation. So this is equation of continuity. Now in case of a charge, this was um, electric current density and that was um, charge rate of change of the de density of charge uh, rate of change. Now I would like to actually come up with something similar. Now I know this one because rho is a density of the substance we were talking about and I know the energy density. So if I will uh, differentiate it by time, I will basically have the right side. Now, if I will be able to express the right side of this equation, which is derivative of this thing by time, in terms of divergence of some vector, that vector would be the flux density, right? Okay, so let's do this. So first I will differentiate this part by time, and then I will try to convert it into something, purely mathematically, into divergence of something. Okay, so let's try to do it. So first we have to differentiate it by time. Now, this is not exactly the good way to do it because these are actually vectors. Now, when we're talking about E square and B square, considering E and B are vectors, well, E square is actually E vector scalar product with E vector, right? That's what it is. So now we can deal with real vectors. Same thing with B. So if I will differentiate that thing, what I will have? Well, first of all, we'll have one half. Then I will have epsilon. Now, um, derivative of this, derivative of product is the first component times derivative of the second plus the second component times derivative of the first. Now, they're both the same, so it would be 2e times dE would be t. This is scalar product, right? Plus 1 over mu 2 b times d b by d t. OK, obviously 2 will cancel out. And what I will have is So I will have epsilon e times dE by dt plus, now this is scalar product of two vectors, plus 1 over mu uh, b times um, dB by dt. OK. <coughs> Now, now we will use the, now this doesn't look like uh, divergence of, uh, of anything, right? Remember, divergence is basically d per dx of the first component plus d per dy of the second component plus d per dz of the third component of the vector. Now, this doesn't look like. 
However, let's just be more inventive. <coughs> now these definitely kind of disturb my uh, the way to convert this into divergence of some vector. But I do have Maxwell equations. Okay, now, what do we do now? We know the Faraday law, which is the, the third Maxwell equation in, in, my, in my course. So this is delta, I mean, nabla uh, vector product of E is equal to minus db by dt. <coughs> uh -huh. So this thing gives me this. Now, there is an ampere Maxwell law, which is the fourth Maxwell equation, which says nabla vector product with b is equal to <sighs> epsilon mu de by dt. So, both equations are Maxwell equations which are presented in previous lectures within the same topic. So I have the whole lecture dedicated to this and the whole lecture dedicated to this. So again, I'm just using these formulas. Faraday's law and Maxwell law. Now, this is Maxwell. This is actually in, in vacuum. And there is no other sources of electricity. So electromagnetic field just goes by itself. There is no electric current which feeds it with something else, etc. Let's just talk about very, very simple case, magnetic field, electromagnetic field in vacuum. So that's the equation. Now, from this equation, I have a very simple expression for um, both derivative, which I will substitute here. So what it will be? So instead of dB, I will put minus nabla uh, E. So that would be minus 1 over mu b times nabla e. OK, Faraday is no longer needed. And for e, I will use this. So I will have epsilon e times mm, 1 over epsilon mu nabla vector product b. Right? So epsilon mu on this side I will transfer to this. That's why it's 1 over mu nabla uh, vector product b. By the way, this goes out. And what's the result? The result is 1 over mu, 1 over mu and 1 over mu. And what do we have here? We have, uh, so not epsilon, E. E, scalar product, nabla, vector product, B minus B, scalar product nabla e. Now these are all vectors. Now, again, in the same topic, I have a couple of um, vector identity. Now these are, this is just pure, um, pure mass, just vector algebra. And uh, from the vector algebra, I will just use this formula, the proof of which, again, in the topic which is dedicated to um, uh, different vector identities, where I prove it, actually. So I'll use it as, as it is. And it's equal to nabla uh,
times B E. Again, just take my word that this is correct for any kind of vector uh, expression. This is scalar product, this is vector product, scalar vector. So this is identity which is proven, and I have proved it in the lecture which is dedicated to uh, different vector identities in the same topic of the course. So you go to, again, physics 14, waves, electromagnetic field waves, and among them there are many different lectures. This is one of the lectures about uh, identities uh, of the vector algebra. And now, what do I need? Well, first of all, this is a D, P, actually we can use rho now. Okay, rho is energy density. D rho to dt. Now, we need it with an opposite sign, right? Remember, we have this continuity equation with a minus. So, if I would like to invert the sign of it, I will have that. Now, by the way, if you change the order of vector product, it changes the sign. So, 1 over nu nabla E times D vector product is equal to minus D rho of x, y, z, t by dt which is basically a continuity equation if if we say that the vector s which is e vector product v well actually with a new this is a vector, right? E is a vector, B is a vector, and we were talking about expressing in terms of this vector, these two vectors. So this is some vector which we can actually treat as the flux density vector, and using this, I can say nabla S, well, obviously it's X, Y, Z, T equals minus d rho by dt, also x by z t. And this is a continuity uh, equation for energy of the electromagnetic field. And by the way, this f uh, vector um, e times b, uh, e in vector product e divided by mu is called pointing vector. Pointing is a physicist and mathematician. Pointing. And it basically tells this continuity equation exists for um, electromagnetic field energy. Energy is conserved, not only just conserved, it's also um, uh, continuously changing. Um, well, basically, that's the most important part of this, which I wanted you to come up with from this lecture, that energy of electromagnetic field uh, adheres to equation uh, of uh, continuity, and the vector S, which is pointing vector, characterizes the magnitude and direction of uh, an, an energy flow of electromagnetic field. And what is this direction? Well, since it's E vector product B is perpendicular to both. Remember, the vector product is um, perpendicular to both components, and these are two perpendicular to themselves, among themselves. So we basically have three vectors, E, B, and, and S. They are all mutually perpendicular to each other, and that's what happened. That's why we have transversal uh, oscillation of uh, electric field, magnetic field, and the propagation goes perpendicular to both of them. That's it. Uh, do read the notes for this lecture. Other than that, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.